while the dream is still fresh in my mind, I guess this is a new feature of the vlog. Because the vlog is a vlog or a journal, um, that's what's happening here. This becomes a dream vlog. The dream is a bizarre one because it, it represents something that, that has never occurred before. There are always things you're afraid of. There's always things that you fear. And the things you fear in your dream cause you pain. When you lose that fear, the pain disappears. And the dream that occurred occurred in a a in one of my favorite places uh, it's something that where the dreams often occur and that's it, my grandmother's house in Boston for whatever reason I kept being arrested not because I was actually doing anything because the, the cop just got angry at defiance, expected direct obedience. And then, as I was on the ground, began opening fire, killing me. You would have expected the bullets to hurt, but I didn't even feel the bullets. Because I've been shot in the past in my dreams and died. And the fear of being shot caused me pain. This time the fear was gone. I was in the sort of position of neutral Jing. And as that occurred, there was no pain. There was death, but there was also return. There, there was immortality. And the thing is, I guess this is the state as well. This is the nature of spiritual battle, because neutral Jing is for Kung Fu. In many ways, it's for, it's, it, it, uh, it uses the spiritual force, the fit, spiritual nature, to achieve a physical battle, but it can also be used in a spiritual battle. And the situation was that as... I kept being killed by various different police officers over a period of time. It would occur again and again and again. You know, I'd, I'd basically be shot, come back again, be shot again. And these were different periods of time, not all at the same time. And it occurred over several officers typically female officers, who would just get very angry. It was just, you, you could see the blinding rage in them. Yet, it came time when they had passed, they had died, and I was there at their final judgment, the final point of their death to decide where they end up going. And they as they approached, recognized who I was, that I was the person that had shot them, that, that they had shot. And in this setting, you could see the fear on their face realizing who I was. And I said, no need to worry. And I let them through. The nature of forgiveness and the nature of stillness, this is something that Christ had. is something that even when an enemy attacks you, you take no guile, you take no offense, you take no position of opposition. You remain neutral. Now, there are those who would say, but again, this is from my own experience, but they would say, you should have stood up for yourself. 
don't let yourself be pushed around like that. Don't let, well, in this case, <laughs> don't let yourself get shot like that. But after a while, I began to realize that because there was no fear, there was no pain. And in the end, in the final point, there was no death. And each time, and this is over several, this occurred, and this is the way dreams can be, over a period of time, over several hundred years. And each time, after the event, I got up and returned to my place, at my grandmother's house, to the family. Now, whether or not that actually carries through to my life, because uh, I have been practicing the new gen, I have been getting more in that position, is one thing. It's the one thing I, 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 I hope to happen in terms of understanding the, the the state of forgiveness, the state of meditation being always with me, always within that state. And understanding the nature of mortality, but in my case, in my case uh, achieving immortality. But these are things you have to explore, and this is watching Aang last night and looking at some of the understandings that were within uh, the cartoon. I don't know whether the, whether the writers who wrote this actually un saw or even understood this. But sometimes, if you're writing something from a sense of tradition, you're writing story in a tradition, the, there is history and information within the tradition itself, even though it is a story. Some people will see it simply as a story and they'll pass on the tradition just like a parrot would. They simply don't have any understanding. They simply pass it forward. Or they have very little understanding. And others will, will, will basically achieve great understanding and move forward in a sense in terms of their own path. In terms of understanding where things may end up heading. But you see, one of the f one of the functions of the vlog is it, me it measures and mirrors and tracks my various different moods, my various different emotions, and how I feel. You know, in the last few vlogs, because of the various different things that were going on, I was very agitated. When I see people hurting other people, I get agitated because I don't like people being hurt. I don't like people being in pain. I don't like people suffering. Yet there are those out there who will cause pain and suffering. And they don't necessarily see that they're doing this. But at the same time, even when they're, when it's pointed out and, they, and, and, and it is revealed to them that they are causing pain and suffering, their own sense of status will say, nope, I'm doing a good job and I'm going to continue on. And this has to do with the whole virus and the lock, the lockdown, and everything. Is now we're being revealed that people are they're seeing the damage being done, and yet why are we locking down even further? Because the people who are doing the damage refuse to put their own sense of status aside. To allow others to live a life on their own. They feel that they need to be in command, in control at all. Particular. It is demonic. It is the height of anger. It is the height of arrogance. <clears throat> and it's highly destructive. People ask, well, how, are, how is China going to win? How is China going to destroy everybody. This is the fear. And again, they're going to do it with neutral gin. They're going to do nothing. Because the paranoia, the anger that goes on in the West, and this is since colonialism, is so fundamentally destructive, so demonic, so left-hand path, as is the left, 
and so-called liberals, that they will destroy themselves. There is no need to do anything but stand back, take a position of neutral jing, and watch their own death occur. The West is, as defined in the East, a death culture. It is about death. It is about mortality. It is morbid. It is, it is morbidity itself. And there's nothing you could do to stop this. Because in many cases, until the anger is, set, is gone, until they understand that this is a situation of anger, that this is demonic or self-destructive, they won't listen. They will deny ever having these feelings or being in this existence. And they will continue on to their own destruction. So the question is now, is the United States is fundamentally out of this. There is no more United States. The two polar powers now are either the Rothschilds or the Chinese. So you ask yourself the question, if we're going into these particular spheres, where do you want to be? Do you want to be with the Chinese, or do you want to be with the uh, Rothschilds? And my choice is I would prefer to be under the Chinese. They seem, from what I know of people in China, they have a freer existence. People here in, in, in the West, under Western control, will be in continuous lockdown. People are now finding out they're extending things to July. And you know they're going to extend it into September. They're finding new variations. And everybody, the whole fluff thing on both sides, left and right, are spinning and turning. They don't see anything. Well, we are back on the 26th of January for a packaging at just about 11.30. Package came in. Here we go. Mm. Don't know what it is. We will soon find out. Once again, it's well wrapped. So it's going to take some time to open it. Taking a bit of time to get everything off. Mm. It appears to be a storage bin. Unfortunately, they didn't pack this well enough, and it came broken. 
plastic does break, it shatters, particularly in the cold, so you do have to pack it almost like glass. So one bin is completely useless. The second bin is fine. There's the bus. Well, in keeping with uh, our tradition, I just found a piece of plastic here. Uh, from the box that came in broken. Oh, uh, and some of our new format, to some degree. Uh, I just woke from a dream. And sort of, it's mulling, I'm mulling it over my mind. I'm still awake, but it's, I'm, it's going through my mind still. It's a sort of, it, it's in some ways a new representation, but at the same time, it's the same old thing. Is how do you deal with somebody's reactions and behaviors that counter or, or contradict your own and cause issues that would cause other people to get up that would cause people to get upset. In other words, it's the dream itself is pushing a button. In this case, it's a person of close relation who has a secret like, and it's not things, nothing, nothing sort of that the average person would uh, f find unusual. She has a like of music that she can't share with everybody else. She grew up in an era, like in the 1950s, where propriety was everything. And then you didn't like things outside of the sense of propriety. Well, what happens if you like something outside the sense of, pro uh, of propriety? The way you're supposed to behave, the standards, the rules, the normal. Well, then you do it on the sly and on the sneak. And see, I'm a person who is considered to be nothing. I have no status, I have no expectations from anybody else, I've got zero self-esteem. And so when the person's confronted with, where were you? I was nowhere. Who you were with? I was with nobody. And that still would be true. Because I'm nothing, I'm nobody, I'm nowhere. This is the nature of neutral gin. And so, the, the meditations that I practice in terms of the prayers, the way I behave on a regular basis, is now following me into my sleep, but it's being tested. So yes, it is new, because I just really, in terms of behaving in, in the, in the, manner of neutral gin in terms of the sense of awareness of meditation becoming an all-day thing, a, a, a continuous thing, is recent. And it has started merging into the dreams, but now more so on a regular basis. And as it, it was a bizarre thing because throughout the entire dream, I remained in the neutral state. Things that would have typically gotten me upset didn't. Because being nowhere nobody for somebody else doing their hidden thing outside of propriety things they feel guilty about even if it's, not, if it's nothing significant it's, just, it's simply outside their sense of propriety the sense of normal will cause you to miss out on things and be excluded I mean, this is not inclusive. You know, we're not you, because you're nobody. You're not included anywhere. You don't have a place because you're nobody. You're nothing. And people will use that sense of nobody and nothing 
to fulfill their senses of propriety and deal with their sort of guilty pleasures, but at the same time, well, who were we with? I was nobody. I was with nobody. I was with nowhere. I wasn't. I was wasn't doing it, anything. And I fulfill that sense of propriety. And that was the case within the dream. Uh, I have the hiccups. And this is sort of a test in some ways or an experience. This, this rolls out just as an experience. It's still going through my mind now. And I have a conversation that the person, there was another person there that she was supposed to be interacting with a dentist, basically, and she was afraid of the dentist and didn't want to go to the dentist and finally didn't go to the dentist. She said, well, I'll have to... She, had, she used another one of her fears in the issue of propriety. She wasn't parked in the lane properly in terms of... She was watching a TV show that I had on, a cartoon, basically. She was listening to some music... Uh, from the 60s that was outside of what she was supposed to be listening to. <laughs> and then when she realized she was parked irregularly, and it was time for the dentist appointment, she decided that she was going to correct the alignment of her car, uh, did so in such a manner that uh, other people took her place, and promptly left. They said, oh, I'll be back in a minute. And of course, because of the way things are, and I won't give you, get, get into the details of this, the conversation that she had way off it, further into the parking lot, actually was tempted to come back and realign her car, could be heard as if she were next to me. In other words, there's no sense of distance. And when, and as, again, in the neutral gin, you become part of the environment. You're immersed in the environment. So you become aware of things that are not typically noticed by other people. And so she, so she, she turned the car around, left through the driveway that was, that was there, where, where I was. Instead of coming back to the park, she left and said, I'll be back in a minute. And, I watched her uh, go down the street, turn the corner, and uh, head to the, to basically what my house would be. And the dentist came out, asked me a couple questions about you know what was going on, and noticed that the uh, teeth had been repaired, parts you know th th things that were of issue to her health had been repaired. And the, but I was nobody. I was nothing. So how does, do I explain this? Well, the medical profession only advances in the manner that it tends to, to advance. In other words, everybody has to have their hand in it. Uh, the people who do the billing need to get paid. Uh, the need, people who do the pharma, who, who, do, who create the drugs need to be paid. And unless all these things are aligned properly, and in other words, that sense of propriety, the propriety is that medicine moves together as an industry rather than an individual person, uh, uh, you know, then there is no progress. And dentistry is one of these part of the medical professions that works in lockstep. It become it, it, it progresses as an industry rather than on an individual individual. So, so individual understandings of medicine in terms of uh, progress aren't acceptable. It has to be, oh, that wasn't properly clinically tested. You have to show your clinical data. Well, not necessarily because the clinical data doesn't doesn't really mean anything other than it was done in a larger clinical setting. That doesn't necessarily mean that the individual mechanism that was found isn't real or true. It just means it hasn't been done on a larger scale. That's all. And it's not that you couldn't scale something up on a more individual basis, but the industry insists on clinical trials because of why? It's industrial. It's done on a significantly larger scale. It requires more industrial involvement. So it can't be done on an individual basis. And so as medicine, as an industry, progresses on an industrial basis, it 
it, its sense of propriety is industrial. And at the end of the thing, he sort of walked away puzzled because he had his sense of propriety and wondered why every once in a while I'm in my place, the, 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 uh, the, the dentist's office, and I smell Chinese food. Because, well, at the mall where we were, while he was taking care of his patients who were coming to him dutifully, for pro uh, you know, on a proper basis, this place was also a uh, Chinese uh, takeout place, a Chinese restaurant <laughs> that does takeout. And that's in another universe. It was the case of parallel universes were, was in the dream there. He didn't understand it. He didn't understand how something could be, you know, he said, well, I thought it was parallel. Well, it's parallel, but it's not necessarily parallel. <laughs> and th th this is, the thing is that because something doesn't meet expectation or is not proprietary, it's not proper, it no longer exists. And so, therefore, it's nothing, it's nobody, it's nowhere, and has no particular value. And so he went in. Who did talk to? Nobody. Where were you? Nowhere. What did you talk about? Nothing. 